Now, it's probably not a big surprise if I were to tell you that most of the photographers who I communicate with, they use Lightroom Classic. Um, but there is a growing number of photographers who uh, are using the newer Lightroom, sometimes called Lightroom CC or Lightroom Desktop, and I am actually one of those photographers. In fact, I've got every single photo I've ever taken since 2009 synced in the new Lightroom. This is what I use primarily. I don't use Classic uh, as my primary catalog for photo editing. I just like this new version. But this video is not about the differences or the benefits of using one over the other. Because there are photographers who use the new Lightroom, uh, I think it's only fair to show you a workflow using the new Lightroom with some of the Topaz apps. And specifically, we're going to use Topaz Denoise AI and Sharpen AI in conjunction with Photoshop. Now, normally with uh, Lightroom Classic, if you wanted to send a photo to one of our apps, you can just right click on it and there would be an edit in menu item with um, Denoise and Sharpen. But with the new Lightroom, the only option you have is Photoshop as an external editor. So we'll use Photoshop as the conduit to access Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. So the other day I went to an area near where I live. Every winter, a bunch of bald eagles and juvenile eagles uh, frequent the area and it's just a lot of fun to photograph them. And as you can see, I got a bunch of photos and originally I was gonna work on a photo like this. Um, obviously I was shooting up at the eagle and I loved the way it was perched on this branch, but I didn't care for the overcast sky behind it. Um, so I like this photo here. I, I, again, it's a beautiful photo. The the, the eagle has this very nice real pose to it. And we're going to use Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. And the reason for Denoise AI is if we zoom in, you can see that this was at ISO 1250 uh, that I shot the photo at. And I had to because that was the only way that I would get a fast enough shutter speed to kind of freeze the eagle um, in motion. It was moving. It wasn't moving around as far as the body, but its head was moving around a lot. And so in order to get a shutter speed fast enough, I had to increase my ISO to 1250. And this was with a Sony A7R Mark IV and the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter uh, telephoto lens with a 1.4 time teleconverter. So um, this is as close as I can get with my gear. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, crop the photo. Uh, I like this photo. I, I don't mind the branches around the eagle because it adds a little bit of depth. You can see that um, there is some nice separation between the eagle and the background. And compared to a photo like this one, where it's just a lot of negative space from the overcast sky, um, this one looks more interesting. So what we're going to do is press E to go to our edit panel. And uh, again, th this is an important point. For the most part, if you're a Lightroom Classic user, everything I do here is basically the same. There's really nothing in the new Lightroom that you can't do in Classic. So uh, what this is the equivalent of the develop module in the Lightroom Classic. And the first thing I'm gonna do is press C to go to the crop mode. I'm gonna make sure that my aspect ratio is locked to original. And we're going to tighten this up because uh, I really want to remove as much of the distraction as possible. So let's go ahead here and see if that looks good. And it does. Um, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit though, just to straighten the eagle out. Uh, a little bit more and let's move it over to the right just a little bit cool all right so that's looking good right here in fact let me go see i don't know if you can relate but when i start cropping it's like it's tiny little degrees uh, you, you make a bunch of little changes but there okay that's looking really good here uh, i have the the eagle kind of in the middle here but what is more important is that the branches on the lower third of the frame, so I find that very pleasing. It's actually, in my opinion, a very nice composition. I also like the way this particular branch uh, curves inward. Um, so overall, happy with the composition. So now let's go ahead here. I'm gonna press W to go to my white balance dropper, and I'm gonna just balance off of um, the white feather of the bird. And you can see that that removed a little bit of that color cast, even though I wasn't using any filters, because of all the green um, from these the, the pine trees, uh, the light kind of, if I undo it, you can see there's kind of that cast from the, uh, the the light coming through all these trees and bouncing around. So here this gives us a much more neutral look. Looking at the histogram here, I have some room to open up the exposure. 
just a little bit. I'm going to take a, a basic S curve with my point curve here. So I'm going to put a dot here, a dot in the middle, and a dot here for the shadows. For the highlights, that first dot, I'm going to increase that a little bit. And then for the shadows, I'm going to do the same thing. And what we're doing is we're adding some contrast to the photo. And then this middle point, that is your midtones. So I'm going to open up the midtones just a little bit here. And there we're looking good. And you can see here, if I toggle, that's um, without the tone curve adjustments. And then this is with the tone curve. So we added this really nice contrast. And people ask me, why don't I just use the contrast slider? I rarely do use the contrast slider. I prefer having this fine tune control uh, with contrast by using the point curve. Uh, so that's that's just my answer. Contra the contrast slider, it, you don't really have fine control over contrast. If you increase it, it, it just does its own thing. Whereas here, this S curve is adding contrast to your photo. We were increasing the highlights, we were darkening the shadows, and we were adjusting the midtones. And this gives me really refined control over the contrast. Next, I'm gonna take my the black slider and I'm gonna move that over a little bit and I'm also going to open up the shadows and let's increase highlights a little bit. Just kind of making sure we get a nice even exposure. And we're looking good there. So now if we press the backslash key, you can see this was the unedited photo. And then just with a few quick edits here, we were able to get a much nicer exposure. The other thing that I want to make sure of is that we don't have any effects because I don't like to apply effects like clarity or texture or dehaze until I do all of my corrective edits. Corrective edits are things like the exposure, which we just did, as well as the color and the white balance, and then things like noise reduction and sharpening. I like to do those things first before I apply any creative edits, um, including vignetting. The other thing I want to make sure of is that I disable sharpening. I don't want any added sharpening to the photo because we're going to use Sharpen AI in a minute. So here we go. This is basically everything um, that we uh, need. Um, and again, here's this is kind of a similar version of the photo we're editing. This is the, the fully uncropped version. And here is our cropped in version that we edited. So now... Again, because there is no way that Adobe, for some reason, doesn't allow external editors from within Lightroom Desktop, so we have to send it to Photoshop. To do that, just right-click and go to Edit in Photoshop, and that'll send a TIFF file to Photoshop. In Lightroom Classic, if I remember correctly, when you send to Photoshop, you have an option. Um, you can save it as different file formats, but with this version, the only option you have is saving as a TIFF file which is fine because TIFFs preserve the layers as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And you can see we now have our TIFF file right there um, in Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is apply a layer with Denoise AI. And again, if we zoom in, you can see that uh, there is noise in the photo because of that ISO 1250 setting. So this is what I like to do. Uh, I like to create separate layers for each of these apps. So I'm gonna right click, go to duplicate layer, and I'm gonna call this Denoise AI. And now with this layer selected, I'm gonna to go to the filter menu, Topaz Labs, and select Topaz Denoise AI. And in Denoise AI, the first thing that I like to do is compare multiple AI models. You can see your models listed over here, and we're not working with a raw file, so the raw model is not accessible. We do have four other models here, so I'm gonna select the comparison view icon. Let's zoom in to 100% and we will put the focus box over the eagle's head. And this is a really convenient view because like I said, we have four models, standard, clear, low light, and severe noise. And in each of these quadrants, we have the model showing. So you can see each one in one convenient view. And if you click and hold in any of these quadrants, you can see the original unedited version. And now what I'm looking at is not just the quality of the noise reduction, but also the uh, retention of edge details. And for this particular purpose, I like severe noise. I'm going to go ahead and increase that remove noise slider a little bit more, and I'm going to turn the enhanced sharpness slider off. Again, because I don't want any added sharpness, we're going to send the image to Sharpen AI in a second. So all I really want is for Denoise AI to remove noise while preserving edge detail. 
And so this does a really good job. If I double click on it, we'll return to the single view here and you can see just how much cleaner it is. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in even tighter. You can see if I click and hold, all that noise is gone, but we're retaining that important edge detail. And that is very important. You don't want to lose that detail when you're removing noise, which a lot of other noise reduction utilities will end up doing. So now that I'm happy, I'll go ahead and click apply to return back to Photoshop. Now that we're back in Photoshop, you can see here we have our two layers. If I zoom in, just to show you, if I hide the denoise AI layer, there is our original noisy layer. And then this is uh, the version with denoise AI applied. So the next thing I want to do is add just a little bit of sharpness. Now, again, you know, it's not a blurry photo by any stretch of the imagination. This is actually fine as is, but sometimes I like to send the photo to sharpen AI just so that I can get a little bit extra texture, a little bit extra detail to the photo. So just like before, I'm going to duplicate this layer here and I'm going to call it sharpen AI. And just like before, I'm going to go to the filter menu item, Topaz Labs, and then Sharpen AI. And now that we're in Sharpen AI, I want to do the same thing we did in Denoise AI, and that's change to comparison view, just so that I can compare four different models. Let's zoom in. I'm going to actually use this slider here just to get pretty tight on the eagle's head. And now we can choose which models we want in each of the four quadrants. So in this top left quadrant, we have out of focus, very noisy. To the right of it, we have out of focus, very blurry. There is no motion blur per se, so I'm not gonna use a motion blur slider. I'll try the too soft normal model here. And then in this one, I'm gonna go to too soft, very noisy. Of the four here, I like the too soft normal the most. So I'm gonna double click it to go back to the single view. And let's go to zoom to fit. Now, I don't want the sharpening to apply to anything but the eagle and the branch that it's on. I don't want sharpening of the background. The background's out of focus, and so I don't want to over sharpen that. So there is a cool new option in Sharpen AI called Auto Select. If I click on this little disclosure triangle, it'll automatically select the subject. And in this case here, you can see that it selected the eagle, but I want to make sure that we get the the uh, branch that it's on as well to be masked in. So what I'm going to do is click on the refine button to go to the masking panel. And now you can see what the auto subject selection is. You can see the actual mask. So there is some refinement that we want to do. First, I'm going to go to the subtract brush here and I'm going to paint out this little extra area around uh, the eagle's head. We don't really need that here. And I'm not too worried about it bleeding over the edge a little bit. It's not that bad uh, when I look at it. So that's looking good. That's a nice kind of tight selection around the eagle. But I'm going to go and click on add here. And I'm just going to draw on the branch. And now that we're done with our mask, let's go ahead and click update to update that mask. You can see if we click and hold, Sharpening is only applied to the areas that we're masking in. We're not sharpening the background. And it's really a very subtle change. That's important. You don't want to over sharpen your subject because it'll end up looking kind of gritty and that never looks good. Here, this just adds a tiny bit extra toothiness to the photo. Uh, the eagle's head really pops off the screen and so does the branch that it's on here, especially when you have it pitted against the background. Now that we're done, let's click on apply to return back to Photoshop. All right, and so to recap here, we have our original layer that we sent in from Lightroom. Then we applied some noise reduction with Denoise AI and then some localized sharpening with Sharpen AI. Now that we're done, we're gonna go ahead and save and close this photo to return back to Lightroom. And now that we're in Lightroom, you can see here is our TIFF file. It's being uploaded to the cloud as we speak. But if we go into it, um, we now have access. And if we go to the right here, you can see this is the version that we sent to Photoshop. You can see it's still kind of noisy and not fully sharp. And then this is the version that we used with Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. Now, there are just a few minor edits that I'm going to make here. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of clarity as well as a little bit of dehaze. And then I'm going to add a nice vignette to really draw the eye 
to the eagle. And so the first slider is the actual strength of the vignette. Then I'm going to bring that midpoint towards the center. And then I'm also going to bring the feather all the way to the right to make a very smooth transition. Now, if it's too dark, go ahead and back off, which is what I'm going to do. And that's looking really good. If you hit the backslash key, you can see how that vignette does a really nice job of drawing focus towards the eagle. And that's the basic workflow of how to use Lightroom Desktop with Photoshop to access Sharpen AI and Denoise AI. And if you wanted to, you can also access Gigapixel AI if you want to upscale your photos. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to try any of these apps, head over to topazlabs.com to download free trials. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.